today then are to be able to describe angles, lines and triangles and to be able to name the different triangles and their properties. Before we start, let's just check our prior knowledge. So to be able to complete this lesson, you should already know the names and sizes of the different types of angles, so our acute, obtuse, reflex and right angles. And you should also be able to estimate the size of angles. Please check you can do those things now. If not, please stop this video and go back and look at the previous one. OK, then, so we're going to start off with describing lines. So when we describe a line segment, we use two letters, one at the end at each end of the line. So the line below, then we've got one end called A and the other end we've labeled B. So we could call that line AB or we can call it BA. So it doesn't matter which way round those letters are. We usually use capital letters to denote the ends of lines. So pause the video now, have a go at naming the three coloured lines below. OK, so let's have a look at the solutions for those then. So the red line, you could have called it BE or you could have called it EB. The blue line, you could have called CF or FC. And the green line is either AD or DA. So make sure you're happy with how we name a line segment. All right, and there are different types of lines that we need to be able to identify. So a parallel line then. Parallel lines are two lines that never meet, always the same distance apart. So they look a bit like train tracks. So no matter how long we extend them, they'll never meet up or never cross. So the top one is parallel and the bottom one there is not. So our top line, if we keep extending those lines, they will never meet. But these ones here, if we extend them, eventually they will get to a point where they cross over. The second type of line we need to know about is perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are at exactly 90 degrees to another line. So again, our top one here is perpendicular. The lines meet at 90 degrees. So we've got our 90 degree symbol here. The bottom one we can see do not make 90 degrees. So they are not perpendicular. All right, pause the video then. Have a look at these pairs of lines. You need to decide if they are parallel, if they're perpendicular, or if they're neither of those two things. And if they are parallel, mark with arrows. If they're perpendicular, mark with the right angle symbol. OK, so this first set of lines up here, then we can see they are running parallel. They're like our train tracks running parallel to each other. So we're going to call them parallel and we mark those with small arrows. So an arrow on each tells us they are parallel. This set down here, we can see if we just extend them a little bit further, they would cross over. So they are not parallel and they're also not going to meet at right angles. So they're neither parallel nor perpendicular. This one up here again, we can see eventually they would meet. So they are not parallel. And again, they will not meet at 90 degrees. So they are not perpendicular either. So neither of those. This one here, then we've got one line that meets another one. So it's not parallel, but it does meet it at 90 degrees. So it is perpendicular. So we're going to mark with our right angle. Check that you're happy with being able to identify parallel and perpendicular lines. You're going to need to be able to use those in our later lessons. So the key point then from this part of the lesson is that perpendicular lines are at right angles, 90 degrees to each other, and parallel lines are always the same distance apart and never meet. It's worth pausing the video now and making a note of those in your book. OK, now we're going to have a look then at describing angles. So when we describe an angle, we use three letters, one at each end of each line, with the letter at the point being our middle letter. So let's see the example here. So we've got a line here, PQ. We've got a line here, RQ. We can see they meet at the point 
Q. So when labeling an angle, we use the three letters and we start at one end P, then down to Q, which is where the point is, and then to R. Or we could go the other way, starting at R to Q to P. So it's really important that whichever the middle letter is, that's the one at the point. So when you're given those three letters, you can follow them from one end to the point and to the other side. Okay, pause the video now then and have a go at writing down the names of those angles. All right, so let's look at the solutions for the first one. We can either call it angle ABC or angle CBA. <coughs> Excuse me. The second one, we can either call it angle RQP or angle PQR. And finally, the last one then, we can either call it angle LMN or angle NML. Now, you'll notice in front of the three letters, I've written the word angle. So that's telling us that those three letters represent an angle. There are, however, some other ways that we might describe our angle. So as well as using the word angle in front of the three letters, we've also got some special symbols that we could use to say that we're describing an angle without actually writing the word. So here we have another angle then. So this is angle, I'm going to call it ABC. So remember, it can be ABC or CBA. We'll stick with ABC for the moment. So I could call it angle ABC. I could put this small symbol in front of the three letters. So this little symbol here means angle. So angle ABC. Or you might see the notation like this. So ABC, where the middle letter has got this little um, upward pointing arrow on it. Uh, again, meaning an angle. So this little sort of top hat on the middle letter also says angle. Uh, so as I said, they mean the same thing. So they're all telling us it's an angle and you will see a mixture of these notations. So in different textbooks, different worksheets, they will use slightly different notations. So you do need to be able to recognize all of them. Again, it will be worth pausing the video and making note of the different ways that we can describe an angle. So there's our key point then. So our angle is either angle ABC or ABC with a little top hat on the B or the angle symbol then ABC. OK, the third thing we're going to look at today then are our triangles. So let's start with our different types of triangles. There are four types of triangles we need to be able to identify and know the properties of. This is our first triangle. So this triangle is called an equilateral triangle. It has three equal sides. Equal lengths of lines are denoted by these short lines on them. So they've all got one little short line marking them, so they must all be the same length. And we've got three equal angles. So I've just used some colored dots there to show that they are the same size. The second triangle we need to be able to identify is this one. Now this is an isosceles triangle. It has two equal sides. So again, the little lines on there tell us that it's these two that are the same length. This one is different. And it has two equal angles. So we have one angle here, but these two here, the base angles in an isosceles triangle are equal to each other. Now, just to bear in mind, the word base does not mean at the bottom of the diagram. OK, we could draw this triangle upside down and these angles could be at the top. Base means we're at the ends of the lines that are the same length, it's where they join the one that is not the same length. OK, so if you think of these as two legs that are the same length, then at the bottom, that's where we've got the two angles that are the same. So we'll follow those two legs down and that tells us which two are identical. Thirdly, then, we've got our last triangle and this triangle is called a scalene triangle. All of the sides are different lengths and all of the angles are different angles. Now we have a special type of scalene triangle and that's this one here. Now this triangle is called a right angle triangle. So it is a scalene triangle. It has three unequal sides and three unequal angles. So all the sides different, all the angles different, but it has 
one angle that is exactly 90 degrees. OK, so we could have a scaling right angled triangle. We could have an isosceles right angled triangle as well, but more commonly they tend to be scaling. Please pause the video, make a note of those different triangles, be careful with the spelling of the names and make sure you can recognise them and understand their properties. Again, we'll be using these to help us solve questions uh, later. All right then, so to be able to describe our triangles using letters as well, we also use three letters, one at each vertex. So um, vertex means corner or vertices means corners um, and they can be in any order. So our triangle below then, we can call it X, Y, Z. We can call it Y, Z, X. We could call it Z, Y, X. You get the idea. So we can go from any corner to any other corner describing our triangle. So six different ways to describe the same triangle. And it doesn't matter which way round those letters are. So again, pause the video, have a go at naming those triangles. OK, so you only need to use one name. I don't expect you to do all six. So you decide which name you want to give to those triangles. OK, let's have a look at the solutions for those then. So any of those solutions below are acceptable. And for the second one and the third one. So have a look through and check you've got one answer for each triangle. OK, so our key point there then to describe a triangle, we use the letters at its vertices. Uh, the vertices are the corners, so we could call that triangle D, E, F or any other combination of those three letters. All right, so we've talked about all the different ways we can describe lines, angles and triangles. So now it's your turn to have a go at using that knowledge. So pause the video, see if you can answer each of these questions. All right then, so the first one, the name of the angle where line PQ, so we've got line PQ here, meets line PR, so that's this line here, so we're going down PQ to PR. So the angle we've got is here, so you've got three different ways of describing it. I've used the angle symbol, so I've called it angle Q, P, R. So we can either write the word angle, or we can use this symbol or the top hat symbol. But the letter P must be the middle letter. Question B then, what type of triangle is triangle X, Y, Z? So we've got this triangle here. We can see it's got this small square in the corner. So that tells us it's a right angled triangle. What is the size of angle X, Y, Z? So again, from X to Y to Z. So following those two lines means it's this angle here. Well, we've already said it's a right angle and we should know that a right angle is 90 degrees. Which angles are less than 90 degrees? So we need to use our skills with estimating. We're looking for any that we believe to be less than 90 degrees. So this angle here, this one here, down here and here would all be 90 degrees. So Again, I've used the angle symbol. Any combination of the three letters, making sure that you've got a P in the middle, an R in the middle, an X and a Y. So you can have any combination as long as those middle letters are in the right places. OK, we then ask what type of triangle is triangle PQR? So hopefully we can see that all of the sides are different lengths. All of the angles are different. So it's a scaling triangle. And it then asks us which three lines make up triangle PQR. So remember, a line is just two letters. So we've got a single line here from Q to P. We've got a line from P to R and we've got a line from Q to R. So those are our three lines. Again, the letters could be either way around.
Okay, well, thank you for watching this lesson. Please click the link to move on to the next lesson when you're ready. Don't forget to subscribe.